Number 10. Romanov Eggs the Romanov dynasty ruled over the Empire of Russia for 300 years. 300 years of breakfast being served in the Winter Palace, and 300 years of ignoring the peasants even after they make an attempt on your life. Fuck, <laughs> peasants. Well, eventually this caught up with the royal family, and the people and the workers revolted. They were pretty upset. It was Soviet time. Nicholas II was forced to abdicate his throne and power and went into exile with his family. Now, since the old government was out and, uh, well, it was time to let in the new one, huh? huh? That's a bad joke. Some resources were allocated to the new governing body. Makes sense. And perhaps maybe some family treasures also may have gone missing. I'm not sure. We totally didn't take. Communists would never take money. What? The Romanov Fabergé eggs, for instance. Jewel and gold encrusted decorative eggs, the same that are probably in Nona's basement. However, these would have been worth a fortune. It's too bad they're missing. What a shame. We'll never know. Beautiful, just beautiful eggs. Gold and jewels. Ah, oh, fabulous. Number nine, Ark of the Covenant. It belongs in a museum. And if you see Indiana Jones in the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, then you know it's chilling in a top secret military storage unit. Besides the whole atomic fridge scene, I actually think that movie's okay. I, do, I really do. The, the monkey swinging thing's a little weird with uh, Shia LaBeouf, but I, don't know, I, think, I, I think it's okay. Well, in Raiders, Indy is after the Ark of the Covenant, or at least he tries to go after the Ark of the Covenant and put it in a museum. <laughs> so stupid. The Germans kind of get there first, and even without Indy to save the day, the Germans, well, they botch it. I know that if you watched that scene when you were younger, it gave you nightmares. Don't lie, I know it did. Well, to put it simply, the Ark is a shiny gold box that may or may not contain what's left of the Ten Commandments. That's right, the same ones that Moses walked down the mountain, Charlton Heston, and these are the commandments of God. You know, you don't talk, you've seen the movie. It's a long movie, four hours. However, it's only meant for the eyes of those who are worthy, because if not, 80s CGI ghosts will come out and melt your face. Like in the movie. Number eight, Montezuma's treasure. The Aztecs were an amazing civilization in Mesoamerica who built grand cities with canals and boats for travel. Pretty smart, all considering they never invented the wheel. It's kind of weird. They, they never did. It's strange. They also happened to fancy a bit of treasure, and by that I mean they loved gold. The smell of it, the texture of it, the taste of it. I love gold! <laughs> Austin Powers, anyone? Chris liked it. He liked that part. Everything was great until the Spanish showed up and introduced Blam Blam's germs and steel, as the Europeans do. The Spanish were after the Aztec treasure, and truth be told, they got a fair share of it too. However, King Montezuma had his own wealth, and it's said to be a fortune, which means he's the king. He's probably got a lot of gold. It makes sense. However, during an attack on the capital city, he was delifed, and his treasure buried somewhere that's never been found. Ooh, boy, you'd find a lot of good stuff in that pile. However, it may also be cursed, so I wouldn't exactly want to go looking. You'd end up with traveler's diarrhea or something. Montezuma's revenge, baby. Ooh. Number seven, German gold. 1940s Germany. They went on a world tour, and they came out pretty strong, honestly. Pretty, pretty strong. However, after the international community decided that goose-stepping home from the coffee shop wasn't ideal, they sent Germany packing. However, during their rise to power, Germany was allocating resources for their future trips. Part of this was stealing gold, treasure, and art, and pretty much anything of value, and bringing it back home to fund the war effort from pretty much anyone they could get their hands on. Ugh. So, after the war ended, all stolen loot was given back to the rightful owners, right? <laughs> of course it was. No, no it wasn't, because this is real life. While some was recovered, many accounted items are still unaccounted for. It's, it's way too much to even talk about, honestly, it's crazy. And for some, some of the stuff may also be sitting in a Swiss bank vault still, so mm, that's kind of shady, Swiss bank, uh-oh. Number six, Mosby's treasure. A Confederate colonel found himself in possession of gold, silver, and valuable family heirlooms. Totally didn't rob all the people in the area to get that though. What, what, what? no? Well, while transporting is totally not ill-gotten gains, it was rumored that a Union patrol was nearby. 
In fear of being caught and slowed down by all of his loot, Colonel Mosby decided to bury his treasure between two pine trees, marked with his knife. That's how you know, you know it's always going to be there. After falling back to Confederate lines, he sent out a patrol to retrieve it. The patrol got got by Union soldiers, and Mosby never returned. So, anyone near Fairfax, Virginia, you may be standing on top of a lot of Civil War treasure. Number five, Hojo Masamune, master sword maker and legendary smith. His sword was passed down through generations. The craftsmanship, the history, and the fact that katanas are just cool. Ask anyone at Anime North, they'll tell you, they're, they're all very cool. Well, it was still around in the 1940s, however, while the international community was explaining to Germany how big of a mistake they made, America was giving Japan a spank on the bum bum. After 1945, America had occupied Japan as it is normal to do after a war. However, that meant the Japanese forces and civilians had to be disarmed. It was kind of a touchy subject and kind of a tough time, but it had to be done. That means no blam blams and no ceremonial poking sticks. The issue is, America wasn't keeping these, I mean they did keep some, but they were more so destroying things and it is speculated that in the confusion that was post World War II Japan, the legendary sword was destroyed, thus lost forever. Number 4 Blackbeard's Treasure the most ruthless pirate of the seven seas and the Queen Anne's Revenger were eventually defeated in battle. Before he met his fate, Old Blackbeard said he buried all of his riches. That was enough to inspire many to look for his booty. One can only imagine what he has buried, gold, jewels, silver, I mean, the possibilities of Blackbeard are endless. He, he, he was everywhere, it could be all kinds of amazing stuff there. It's, Kind of overwhelming to think about. I should go on a treasure hunt. However, it's kind of like that last scene in Breaking Bad. Jack was gonna tell Walt where his money is, but Heisenberg, Heisenberg didn't care and ended it. Sometimes ending the reign of an evil man is more important than taking his riches. That's why they, they got rid of Blackbeard. He's not around no more. Number three, Libertalia. Uncharted fans rejoice. So it's the early to mid 1700s, and you're a pirate in the golden age of piracy. Ooh, nice. The Caribbean was a hotbed for your misdeeds. However, sometimes it wasn't so easy to dodge the crown on the seas, and getting caught would mean, well, you'd probably lose your life. It wouldn't be good. So what did a bunch of pirates led by Captain Jane's mission do? They made their own colony in Madagascar, because you can't boss us around if we were the bosses. Mm, smart. It was called Libertalia. So imagine, if you will, a whole city full of the nastiest, most violent criminals of the seven seas. Can you imagine what those bars were like? Sadly, however, this may or may not have been true. We're, we're not exactly sure. It sounds like it might not have been true, just made up. But cool if it was, though, and then, and then it'd be lost of time as we we'll find it. Number two, feature presentation. As an actor, I find this one pretty cool. The story of the Kelly Gang was released in Australia in 1906 and is regarded as the first feature length film. With a runtime of over an hour, the movie depicts the story of an old outlaw gang. At the time, the film was doing great and opened in New Zealand as well as England. Pretty cool for the time. Sadly, though, for fans of vintage film, uh, which includes me. Check out Freaks 1932, it's one of my favorites, great movie. But like I said, sadly the film was lost and or partially destroyed, meaning the only thing we have left is a few segments of the movie. We've done our best to uh, refurbish the film, but it's been lost to time. Number one, Atlantis of the Sands. Atlantis of the Sands refers to a legendary lost city in the southern deserts of the Arabian Peninsula, thought to have been destroyed by a natural disaster or as a punishment by God. Known as Ubar, Wabar, or Iram. In 1992, excavations in the area did reveal some sort of city was present many years ago. However, there's not much to be found, and many theories have sparked up. This could be a lost city that's mentioned in Islamic holy books and maps. However, some may say the remains of the stone structures that are there are of that of a much later simple fortress, or others think it doesn't even exist at all. So, you can go figure, but otherwise, it's lost. I found it on Uncharted with Nathan Drake. We, we, we found it, but you know, everyone else, they, they, they didn't find it, that, but that's okay. Number 10, Graf Zeppelin. 
I wouldn't blame you if you never heard of this beast, but back in the 1940s, aircraft carriers were all the rage, combining the air support and air superiority of airplanes and the naval capabilities of a large ship. They were effective and kind of defined that era. That being said, these bad boys were extremely expensive and tough to build. The Graf Zeppelin was to be the cornerstone of the German naval power, except it never really saw any use. By the end of 1945, Germany was sitting in the timeout corner yet again, and the Soviets, well, not having their own aircraft carrier, thought, why not borrow the keys? Makes sense. Well, the test drive just wasn't working out, so they decided to use it as target practice. The large vessel now rests 260 feet below the Baltic Sea and was only discovered in 2006. It's kind of cool. Number nine, the Bismarck. More German naval power flexing. The Bismarck was one of two battleships meant to show off that Germany, ooh, meant. Uh. Business. Massive ships with a length of 251 meters and a crew of almost 2,000. She was a beast of the seas. After engaging in only a few military operations, her legend quickly made the Royal Navy shiver in their timbers. Who can blame them? And they wanted this thing sunk, and they wanted it sunk bad. So it was time to hunt the Bismarck. And after enough chasing and drama to write a small novel, which I'm pretty sure there's a few, the Bismarck was caught between a rock and a hard place. A well placed torpedo had given the German giant some serious damage. Damage, enough that it was decided that they should scuttle the ship to prevent British from boarding. Regardless of what happened, she now rests at the bottom of the ocean. Number 8. The Nimai Ships Emperor Caligula was a dude who loved his opulence, but he had his own version of the Jabba the Hutt barge from Return of the Jedi. Pretty sweet. Magnificent pleasure cruises with all the amenities that you think a Roman emperor would have. These ships seemed to be lost to time, or at least that was thought. Rumors had spread that Lake Nimai was the final resting place of these legends. Even folks back in the 1400s were curious about such wrecks, as not only did they discover them, but tried to recover them. Sadly, they just didn't have the technology to do so. It wasn't until a certain square jawed Italian leader and fascismo and his compadres came about the ship that it would see light again. Pretty cool. However, sadly, during an explosive discussion with the US Artillery Corps, the ships were destroyed in WW2. Pretty cool though, pretty cool. Number seven, the Yamatau. You didn't think the Germans were the only bad boys in the ocean with a big old battleship, did you? Well, think again, Buster. The Yamatau is the story of Imperial Japanese pride during the 40s and its downfall. Shortly commissioned after Pearl Harbor, she was a gem of Japanese power and status. However, if you didn't skip history class and you came here for history, which thank you, I appreciate that, you'd know that things for Japan, bit by bit, eh, got a little worse for them. It all went downhill after the Battle of Midway. Ever since the Battle of Midway, they were on the back of their heels. By 1945, Japan was running low on, well, just about everything but willpower. They are they, pretty impressive fighters. Somehow this massive battleship had yet to be sunk. Its final orders were to beach itself at Okinawa and prepare for a defense until it was destroyed. And if you know anything about the Japanese, it's that they are not quitters. Eventually, she was destroyed and lost most of her crew. She now rests at the bottom of the ocean as well. You're, you're gonna find a lot of these are at the bottom of the ocean. You're gonna that's just gonna happen. Number six, the Endurance. Here's a recent discovery for you, and it's actually very cool. The Endurance was a ship helmed by Ernest Shackleton, an explorer in the time of explorers. An explorer's explorer, if you will. He was taking a decent sized vessel and modest crew to explore the cold waters of Antarctica. How well did that go? Well, the ship was thought to be lost for over a hundred years. So, yeah, it didn't go very well. The ship got caught in packed ice and it eventually sunk. However, everyone lived, so there's, hey, that's we like that, that's good. Nice. Well, in March of 2022, not that long ago, it was announced that the ship had been found. Look how good that ship looks for being over 100 years old and sitting at the bottom of the ocean. Supposedly, it's been well preserved because of the cold temperatures. Titanic wishes it looked that good. It don't, but it do, but it wishes. Number five. The Queen Anne's Revenge, sir. Avast, sea land lovers! It'd be the ship of the most fearsome pirate to ever set sail on the seven seas. Blackbeard, the pirate's pirate, and what would a pirate be without his ship, right? The Queen Anne's Revenge was a ship to be reckoned with. With an estimated 40 blam blams, it would put a hole in your sail, so to speak. Blackbeard was part of the golden age of piracy, the very same that makes you think about pirates and booty and Johnny Depp. Remember how hot he was in the 80s, right? Right, ladies? He's gorgeous. Anyway, the Queen Anne's Revenge was found in 1996 just off the coast of North Carolina. 24 blam blams have been recovered since, all of different weights, sizes, and origins, which adds to the evidence. When you're a pirate on the run, you can't exactly just walk into the uh, cannonade store and ask for some more nautical blam blams. 
You kind of got to take them wherever you can get them. Number four, the SS Edmund Fitzgerald. SS Edmund Fitzgerald was an American Great Lakes freighter that sank in Lake Superior during a storm on November the 10th, 1975, with the loss of the entire crew of 29 men. When launched on June 7th, 1958, she was the largest ship on North America's Great Lakes, and she remains the largest to have sunk there. She was located in deep water on November 14th, 1975, by U.S. Navy aircraft detecting magnetic anomalies, and found soon afterwards to be in two large pieces. Ooh, not, not, not a thing you want your ship to be in. If you've ever been to Lake Superior or any of the Great Lakes for that matter, you know sometimes the water there can be a little rough. As a Canadian, I've spent my fair share on most of the Great Lakes, and well, you kind of got to be there to see them. They feel like seas more than lakes, to be honest, and surprisingly deep at certain points, like stupid deep. The tragedy of the Edmund Fitzgerald even got the Gordon Lightfoot treatment in what is probably the best folk slash story song ever written. Goes to show you, even in modern times, the life of a sailor sure ain't easy. Number three, the USS Arizona. It was a peaceful day, just like any other on December 7th, 1941, and not a day that would live in infamy at all at the Pearl Harbor Naval Base in Hawaii. When all of a sudden, Japanese planes came barreling out of the sky and unleashed a deliberate attack on the base, destroying ships and fuel reserves, including the USS Arizona. Thousands of people lost their lives, and now America was involved in Japan's world tour. Our American audience knows all about this, or at least I hope so. You might be studying for a test right now, but I'm here to help. However, this may be news to some who live outside the greatest country on Earth, or so I'm told. The USS Arizona sunk that day, and it remains there. There's even an interesting memorial that you can visit that basically sits over top of the wreck from a time long past. While this was a major blow to US Navy power at the time, the US would come back kicking strong and eventually push Japan all the way back home. They, 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 get, they, they got it back, fair and square, I think. Number two, USS Maine. Blame the Maine on Spain, they said in early 20th century propaganda regarding what to do with the lovely island of Cuba. A US ship had gone boom boom in the Havana Harbor, and it was exactly what the US needed as a scapegoat to give them some more manifest destiny. And who does, we all love that. Everyone loves manifest destiny. Except it might not have been the Spanish who destroyed the ship. It might have been on purpose or an accident. However, this shipwreck is important for a couple of reasons. One, a war started after this, which historians can take note of the beginning of imperialist American ideals in Central America. And this was also the war where the one and only Teddy Roosevelt and his Rough Riders got his fame from. So it can't all be that bad, right? It can't be that much of a loss. America ends up with more territory and they get Teddy Roosevelt. That's just a win-win in my books. Number one, the Santa Maria. It's the ship that discovered America. Good old Christopher Columbus. Imagine a world without America. No apple pie, no George Washington, and no freedom. Oh. I wouldn't want that. How would we ever get on without Hollywood, McDonald's, or our obsession with reality TV? I love you, America. And thank you, Christopher Colum... Okay, well, maybe not thank him, actually. America, yes. Chris, no. The dude was actually kind of rotten. Ugh, we're looking back now, he wasn't so nice. Like, a lot of people weren't back then. The Santa Maria sunk back in 1492 and was salvaged for wood for a base of some sort. I was gonna say, it belongs in a museum. But Chris wasn't exactly the nicest guy, so maybe it's better the ship's gone. Plus, we all know and love a much better Chris anyway. Our Chris. He's... We love that guy. He's great. He's awesome. Yeah. Kicking off the list at number 10, Pompeii Chariot. Yeah, nothing like finding a sweet ride from ancient times. Once a thriving, beautiful city in ancient Rome, Pompeii was sadly destroyed in 79 AD. The eruption of Mount Vesuvius buried the ancient city in volcanic ash. Excavations, of course, didn't begin until much later, during the 18th century, and after an entire century of careful searching, the city was reopened to the public once again. All was lost during that fateful eruption, but we're slowly, slowly recovering more and more. For example, a 2,000 year old chariot is pretty sweet. The decorations on the side are quite beautiful. They look like flower decorations, and according to Eric Poehler, who is a professor at the University of Massachusetts, this chariot was for the highest class. He calls it the Lamborghini of chariots. <laughs> I still can't drive. Nice. Number nine, Pompeii Restaurant. Table for eight, perfect. Another addition to the list has to be another find from Pompeii. This is the first time in history where hot food and drink eatery has been unearthed. Yeah, in case you're wondering right now, fast food was also tempting the finest back in the first century. Yeah, we found a restaurant in 2019, but we were too busy talking about the Avengers to care about it. The meal of the day was most likely honey roasted rodents. Yeah, that's our best guess. Archeologists have gathered clues to find out what 12,000 people were rushing to eat every single day. Honey roasted rodents, nice. Rolls off thy tongue, some would say. In typical human fashion, the restaurant is now 
Open again. It's the, the same place. Yep, don't forget to tip. It's bad juju. Please don't tip. You have to tip. You have to. Number eight, Turkey Gladiator Arena. Ah, uh, yes, another arena, another staple in history filled with gruesome combat in the name of entertainment. An 1800-year-old arena was discovered back in 2020. We were all still, you know, inside watching Ozark. Meanwhile, a 90-meter wide amphitheater was found in the ancient city of Mastura. Its purpose was thought to be the same as the Colosseum. Just, you know, a lot of bad stuff. It was to host these massive professional gladiator fights with a lot of wild animals. They were involved doing bad stuff. This was around 200 AD when the Severian dynasty was ruling the Roman Empire. If betting on animal fights was your thing, you'd have to travel to this place. This is where you'd want to go. Yeah, hope you have trail shoes on and great knees. Ugh, I'm getting weak just looking at those hills. My patellas are like, no, I don't want to go. Can we go to Rome, please? Number seven, the great treasurer. Ta and Wish had a pretty sweet job back in 1200 BC. He was the head of treasury under Ramses II, AKA Ramses the Great, the third pharaoh of Egypt's 19th dynasty. He once ruled from 1279 to 1213 BC, and about a year ago, we found his royal scribe's tomb. And it's pretty fancy. It's, it's very fancy. The site also includes tombs of other statesmen from the 19th dynasty, of course buried in Saqqara, Giza. In typical tomb fashion, Cairo archaeologists found writings and drawings that tell us more about Egypt's time under the ruling of Ramses the Great. And it looks nothing like any of the graffiti we have today. <laughs> Where art is gone, Na like natural history of art and stuff, it's just we've lost that. Now we have Twitter, that's how we're gonna be remembered by. Twitter and sporks, that's all we'll find in thousands of years. Number six, the lost city of Heraklion. Before it was discovered in 2001, the ancient city of Heraklion was barely mentioned in texts throughout history. Yet archeologist Frank Gaudio still found it. What an OG. It was hiding in the depths around seven kilometers off the coast and it was pretty obvious that it was an ancient city because, well, there were 64 shipwrecks and 700 anchors and 16 foot statues just hanging about. One vessel was around 80 feet long. It was a classical Greek flat bottom ship, flat bottom ship, with oars on both sides and a massive sail. It was a bit hard to find this wreck seeing as it was hidden. It was hidden 15 feet under the collapsed temple of Amun. Good problems, I'd say, you know? Like, ah, oh, there's treasure in the way of finding that treasure. Where do I even start? A project led by the European Institute for Underwater Archaeology, <gasps> a lot of words, obviously kept searching, so they also found a fourth century Greek funerary area. Yeah, ancient graveyards underwater. Guy, watch a movie. This is how you get cursed. Let's move on. Number five, Vasa shipwreck. Back in 1628, the Vasa sunk within 20 minutes of setting sail, and it claimed the lives of 30 souls on board. Pretty tragic. The Swedish Navy launched the ship August 10th, 1628, and at this time, it was considered a high-tech warship. It was referred to as spectacular. Yeah, they even said it with that accent. Spectacular. I don't even know what accent that was, but they said it like that. So what happened here? Well, the first rush of wind caught it off guard, made it all off balance, and the second rush of wind completely sank it. No combat, nothing. No icebergs popping out of nowhere. It just sank. There was a crowd around watching the entire thing. They were watching this great, glorious send-off. But the 64 bronze cannons that were installed, you know, during the rushed process to make it look spectacular or whatever, they were too heavy, so the ship sank. The lack of oxygen in the water allowed for its rediscovery to continue its story. The Vasa was built with carvings all around the king at the time, who was King Gustav II. So when the wreck was rediscovered in 1961, I say recent, this is pretty recent, 95% of the wood was still perfectly intact. Yeah, I had to talk about this, this is amazing. Humans are focusing too much on naval warfare rather on if the ship can actually, you know, stay afloat. I can't tell if this is a curse or just humans being humans. Number four. Luxor tombs. Oh man, I wish this happened while I was in high school. I would have done so many projects on this as it unfolded. That would have been sweet. Back in 2014, quite recent, archaeologists discovered a 4,000 year old tomb from the 11th dynasty tucked away in, you guessed it, Luxor, Egypt. That's like the ultimate find right there. A Spanish archaeologist found the tomb belonging to the leader from the 11th dynasty. And it was pretty obvious this was somebody from the royal family. Officials believe the tomb may have been used as a mass grave, you know, due to the large amounts of human remains found inside. That's definitely one way to tell. That's for sure helpful. It's important to note that this tomb had also been used during the 17th dynasty later on because tools and utensils from that time were also found that were not in existence from prior. See, humans can share even mass graves, sometimes. Number three, cursed tablet. 
Super recent discovery right here, small but mighty. This tablet comes in at just two centimeters by two centimeters. Discovered only a month ago in the West Bank, this artifact has historians scratching their heads because it's a couple hundred years older than any Hebrew texts. It predates the Dead Sea Scrolls by 1,350 years. So it's pretty old. The ancient letters meant to call God onto anybody who breaks this curse. This little, this little curse. There's around 40 proto-alphabetic letters, early Hebrew writing, all folded onto this little lead tablet. The fact that this small tablet mentions the curse of Yahweh is pretty alarming. Like, what are the odds that we found this exact part? This sediment comes from excavations done in the 80s on Mount Ebal, so many believe this is from the ancient stone structure, Joshua's altar, which is dated around 1200 BC. Yeah, a little tablet from the Mountain of Curses. Yeah, just what we need right now. Awesome, keep it up guys, great work. Number two, the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Israel Antiquities Authority believe they have found the oldest woven basket in history. This basket comes from the Neolithic period, some 10,000 years ago, which is pretty impressive. This basket is made of woven reeds. It predates pottery in the region, and due to the area's hot, dry climate, the basket was able to stay in remarkable shape all this time. It was a pretty nice find in something called the Cave of Horrors. Yeah, I'm not even making that up. It's called the Cave of Horror. Sorry, correction, horror. One singular horror not horrors. Back in the 60s, the remains of 40 people were found from a long, long time before. So it makes sense that they didn't rush back to the cave to search for anything else. Now cut to March 2021, fragments of a Dead Sea Scroll were found in that same cave, the Cave of Horror. The writing on the scroll are mostly Greek letters with some in Hebrew. Dead Sea Scrolls in a Cave of Horror. Yeah, sounds like I'm making this up. I wish I was, I'm not. And finally, number one, ancient Greek shipwreck. The oldest shipwreck discovered in the Black Sea, and you would never guess by looking at it. Looks brand new, looks like it just left four days ago. This ship is from 400 BC. It's an ancient Greek trading vessel. It's not very large, but somehow this thing is mighty. It has been in great condition for over 2,400 years, over a mile below the surface. Yeah, no light, nothing. Even the fish are like, what is that? The lack of oxygen actually preserved the ship. That's why it looks like it sank a year ago and not, you know, thousands. John Adams, principal investigator with the Black Sea Archaeology Project, describes the finding as something he never thought was even possible, let alone something he'd witnessed in his lifetime. That's why we had to finish in our number one spot. Only made sense. 